Ciao and welcome to a glorious Italia, where today we're driving this, the brand new Alfa Romeo Tonali plug-in hybrid. This is the one we've all been waiting for because it has 280 horsepower. Now it's made up of two halves. Under the bonnet, you've got a 1.3 litre petrol engine and thanks to the batteries supplying power down here at the rear, you've got an electric motor. So that means this is an all wheel drive car, albeit without a drive shaft in the middle. Now in electric mode, it can do a claimed 50 miles, but what I'm most excited about is the fact that Alfa Romeo reckons this 280 horsepower car is the one to get the Alfisti excited, the driving enthusiasts. So today we're gonna to put that to the test. Is this a true Alfa Romeo? Let's find out. So to answer that question, we have come to the best place we could have, an Italian mountain road. And it's November, but the sun is shining. And I'm now confronted with a wonderful section of twisty tarmac. To answer the question, is this a fun Alfa Romeo to drive? All right, Alfa Romeo isn't being around the bush with this. They know that most of the buyers of this car aren't gonna be traditional Alfisties. They're not gonna be the kind of people who get won over by the GTAM but it still needs to feel like an Alfa Romeo, which is why this car has, as close as it can do, a 50-50 weight distribution, and it also has the fastest steering rack in the class. But what matters, and what's different from the mild hybrid we drove earlier in this year, of course, is this very complicated setup. Petrol engine up front, electric motor out the back. And I've left the car at the moment in N, which is natural or normal mode from its DNA system, just to allow the electric and petrol motor to work in tandem automatically, effectively. I've left the gearbox in automatic as well. And there is a lot more torque on offer than that mild hybrid. The mild hybrid is night and day compared to this and that with how much more performance this has. I can go up a hill here, put my foot down, and I'm being accelerated up the hill so easily. I'm gonna click it into manual just so I can use these lovely shift uh, aluminium paddles here. I'm a big fan of those. And remind me so much of Ferrari shift paddles. And these really are a big selling point from the driving point of view. And you do use them in these moments because in truth, and if I'm being honest, I've noticed that coming from a slower corner, if you're not fully on it, and then you suddenly ask to be on it, the engine and the gearbox just aren't quite as responsive as you want them to be. While the torque delivery from the rear axle is, of course, almost instantaneous, it just doesn't drop down into the gear you want it to straight away. So I found myself clicking over into the manual setting and using these shift paddles to make the most of the car. It's quick to respond. It's not razor sharp Porsche PDK quick, but it's quick enough. There's a, probably a half a second delay between you pulling the up or the down paddle. Down into the right gear. I can feel the front end pulling me, but then I can also feel the torque from the rear. It's just really nice and quite cohesive. There is a sensation of the car tightening the line. We've got brake activated torque vectoring on this, which basically means the inside wheels will be pinched, or their brakes will be pinched a little bit as you turn through a bend and it just helps with the agility. And if I then put my foot down as I come out, it's not got the shove I was hoping. I was really hoping that you would get a real kick up the backside of electric torque, but perhaps I was asking for too much. I, I, I'm getting a nice smooth delivery out of bends, but it's not kicking me out of corners as I'd hoped. An interesting thing as well I've noticed is this engine, while it does rev all the way up to 6,000 RPM or the red lines at six anyway, it just feels a bit yeah, it just runs out of puff a little bit at the top end. It does pull all the way up, but the engine feels it like it's strongest in the meat of the range. I feel like short shifting through and leaning on that electric torque is really where most of the enjoyment and the satisfaction of coming out of bends in this car is. Here's a nice corner. And I can feel the steering is so quick and so reactive. And also the suspension as well, which has two stage damping. It can be stiffened up or softened off. And I've left it stiffer because this road is lovely at the moment, lovely and smooth and the car corner's nice and flat. There is a little bit of roll, but you wouldn't want this to be bolted to the ground flat. You want that communication. And actually talking of communication, while the steering itself doesn't provide anything really significant in feel, I can feel the grip from the Bridgestone tires through the floor of the car. I can feel them almost through the heels of my feet on the carpet. When I get to the limit on turning, I can just start to feel that signal of vibration is a little bit through the steering wheel, admittedly, but there's even more through the floor of the car. And I just start to know when those Bridgestones wrapped around 20 inch wheels on this car, when they're reaching the limit of their grip. So there are some of the details an Alfisti might look for in an Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I mean, it is fun to steer it through the bends. I'll be honest, I'm having a good time and the car really does corner nicely. It's not rolling around, like I said. So I feel really confident to hammer into a bend. 
It's really good front end on this car. All right, I'll give them credit where credit is due. This has a terrific front end. It just doesn't have that throttle adjustability I thought it might do with that electric power at the back. It's a much smoother delivery of power, but do you know what? Compared to the mild hybrid, this is so much more interesting to drive. So much more fun. I wish, I wish it had a bit more electric chub. But you know what? Most of the buyers for this car aren't going to be thrashing their car along on a country route, are they? They're going to be driving through town or on the motorways. And actually, we just got to the end of this B route. So let's see how it does in a slightly more efficient manner. All right, so now we are into a bit of an urban area and I've switched the car back to its A setting, which basically means it's in advanced efficiency mode. Effectively, only the rear of the car is powering us, that electric motor. And I must say it's super smooth, super quiet. Uh, the power delivery is more than enough. It will get us up to motorway speed, technically. Um, and as you use it in town, it feels really quite refined, actually. And the delivery is smooth. I can hear the whine of the electric motor and not much else. It's a nice feeling. I think it's going to be more than effective. I should say while I'm driving around town, this car's visibility is still great. I mean, nothing's changed, obviously, from that mild hybrid model, we know. And if I put it now back into the end mode, which is the normal mode, where it mixes between engine and electric motor as it pleases, I can feel the transition. When I come off the power, the engine switches off completely. And when I get back on the power, then the engine comes on to give you a bit more performance. And it's really seamless and really very smooth. I haven't talked about the dampers too much. So we had them in the sportier setting. When you put the car into its D dynamic mode, it stiffens the dampers up, but you can, interestingly, soften them off. But now I'm in the normal mode, I've got them softened off. And the ride is good, I must say. It's just over those slightly bigger speed humps. And if you carry a bit more speed over them, that you do feel the rear of the car just rocking a little bit. But it's more than enough, I mean, it's fine. The body control is really very, very good in this car. And that, that's also true when you, you pick up the speed as well. So it does feel like a quality product. I think what's gonna win people over is the design and the fact that this interior is absolutely lovely. The technology you get in this Alfa Romeo is so nice. The infotainment screen and the digital instrument cluster ahead work really well and they're just so nice to use. And all of the fit and finish of the cabin is lovely. I really like the seats. The steering was really nice. These paddles are going about them all day. I love them. I think they're excellent. They're worth getting a car with these. And I think that overall, it just feels that much more special than the rivals. I think you would go for the Alfa Romeo because it feels a little bit more emotive in its design and its feeling. But it doesn't quite have the power I was hoping for. I know I said this earlier, but I guess the added weight of all of this equipment means you don't have that shove in the backside. It's just more of a smooth and momentum-based delivery of power. Yes, okay, you do get going and it's quick enough for most people. But for anyone looking for that real Alfa Romeo sense of excitement on a twisty road, you're gonna get it mostly from the handling. But overall, I think that's kind of exactly where this car needs to be. Nobody at Alfa Romeo, not even the CEO, is denying that this car is aimed squarely at the mainstream. Effectively, you can think of it as the machine that will hopefully be like the Porsche Cayenne or the Macan for Porsche. It means if this sells well, which I think it might do, it means they'll have more cash in the bank to make special models like that GTAM that they did recently. And I think we can all agree that's a very, very good thing. Right, we're gonna head back now and go get some Italian ice cream, but I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, of course, like it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot more content coming up soon. Ciao for now. Woo.